Hello, I'm Dr. Janine Downey. I'm a board certified dermatologist here with Healthline to talk about acne and how to treat it. First of all, you're totally normal if you have acne, no matter how old you are, no matter your gender, no matter where on your body it shows up. If it's whiteheads, blackheads, cysts, papules, pustules, I've seen it all and I'm gonna help you get through it. First I'll say, nothing beats a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a board certified dermatologist to figure out the best treatment for your individual skincare needs. However, there are plenty of over-the-counter options while you're waiting to try on your own. I always like to tell my patients, you didn't get the acne overnight. It's not going to go away overnight. You have to be patient. Now, if you overstrip your skin with witch hazel, if you smoke, vape, or smoke weed, if you're constantly picking, or if you just love to ask the dermatologist questions, but not listen to our answers, the issue will be that your skin will not heal as readily as my patients that I like to call the Johnny on the spot patients that are texting stuff into their phones while they're talking to me, that want to know about chemical peels, that will stop picking the minute I tell them the first time. Those are the patients that do the best. So be a Johnny on the spot patient. Sit at the front of your chair, listen to what I'm saying, focus on it so that you can have clearer skin. The most important advice I need you to take away from this video is do not poke, pop, scrape, pick, or otherwise manipulate your acne. Touching it will only make it worse, and you can leave permanent scars or start an infection, none of which you want. So acne itself is a clogged hair follicle. There are various types of acne depending on how deep and how inflamed your acne is. In order to properly treat it, we first need to figure out what it is. Is it inflammatory acne or is it non-inflammatory? Non-inflammatory acne is also known as comedonal acne, meaning it shows up as comedones, those little bumps topped with a white head or a black head. Comedones are usually pores that have gotten blocked with bacteria, oil, and dead skin cells. So whiteheads are closed comedones. They have a white or a light tip, while blackheads are open comedones. They appear dark because the melanin pigment in our natural oil oxidizes when it makes contact with the air. Whiteheads and blackheads are more common in people that smoke and those with more oily skin, but you can see them in anybody. Luckily, it's the most mild form of acne and it usually isn't painful, but it still can scar. You want to unplug the comedones with an effective topical treatment, not by poking and prodding at your face. So in terms of non-inflammatory acne treatments, now people love those super satisfying pore strips that show you all the gunk you've pulled out your pores, and these work by temporarily removing maybe some of the debris on the top layer of your skin and that oxidized oil and dirt that sometimes comes with it. During a breakout, this could be a good way to remove blackheads and whiteheads, but it could also remove important oils from the skin, which can lead to irritation and dryness. So that's not gonna help you with acne in the long run. And in fact, it could make your skin worse if you don't moisturize afterwards. So we as board certified dermatologists do not recommend pore strips. Instead, I would recommend either a clay mask, which is a much more gentle ingredient that pulls out excess oil and can help in terms of loosening your dead skin cells, or something over the counter, chemical formulas that encourage skin cell turnover without stripping the skin. Some of the most popular chemicals used to treat acne are salicylic acid, which is beta hydroxy acid, and glycolic acid, which is alpha hydroxy acid. You'll find them often in cleansers, exfoliating masks, spot treatments, and serums. Use these one at a time and start with a lower concentration and you can increase as you see how your skin reacts. And don't forget, acid treatments increase sun sensitivity, so be sure to use sunscreen afterwards, an SPF of 30 or more, and reapply it every two hours, which I knew you're doing anyway, right? If those don't clear it up, you can try a retinoid formulation. Strong retinoid, retinol, and retinaldehyde formulations require a prescription, but for comedones, you're likely to have success with an over-the-counter option called adaptoline or Differin. So the brand name was really popular as a prescription and then it went over the counter and it's accessible almost everywhere. Stronger options for treating whiteheads and blackheads that would be prescription would be Acleth, Altrano, and Retin-A Micro. Those are scripts that I write all the time and those are for spot treatments. 
Overall, non-inflammatory acne is pretty treatable using the over-the-counter topical products. It'll take a few weeks to start really seeing a difference, so be patient when you're trying new products. If you don't see a change after six weeks or so, maybe try a new product or ask a board-certified dermatologist. Now, inflammatory acne can be a bit harder to treat. It's the kind of acne that's red and swollen, sometimes painful, and definitely can scar you. But because the bacteria is under the skin surface, it's trapped and it causes what people think is an infection. So they try to pick it to get it out and they scar themselves. Papules are what we call those hard clogged pores that are tender to the touch and typically surrounded by a pink discoloration. Papules occur because the walls surrounding the pore have actually broken down and started this inflammation. Similar to papules, you might have pustules. These also form when the wall of a pore breaks down and they fill with pus. These usually appear red and often have a yellow or whitish head on the top of them. Moderate acne can be very well cleared up by over-the-counter medications. These include salicylic acid and glycolic acid, as we talked about before, or a retinoid formulation like Differin. You can also try spot treatments with benzoyl peroxide, which is stronger than salicylic acid and glycolic acid, and typically good for normal to oily skin. Benzoyl peroxide is antibacterial, and it kills the bacteria underneath the surface of the skin, healing acne faster and better, and helping with excess oil. Widespread moderate acne might require an oral or a topical prescription from a dermatologist, which we will get to. Then we have our most severe kinds of acne, nodules and cysts. These typically always scar. A nodule is a clogged, swollen pore, much deeper than papules and pustules. They're larger, they can be more irritated, and they don't always have a visible head. Cystic acne is also very severe. These are deep, large knots on your face, and they're usually caused by the history of cystic acne in their family. They can be red, they can be white, they can be brown, they can be whatever your skin tone is, and they hurt. These cysts and nodules are found on the face, on the neck, on the chest, and on the back, as well as the shoulders. Sometimes, if you're very unfortunate, you can get them under your arms and in your groin area. If you get them in any of these areas, please seek the help of a board-certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon immediately so we can relieve your pain and help you out. Severe acne that includes nodules and cysts needs definitely professional attention. A board-certified dermatologist can put you on prescription medications, usually orals like the very popular isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, which is the brand name. There's also a bunch of other names for isotretinoin out there. And you may need to take it for six to nine months to decrease the cysts and the size of the oil glands. So what Accutane does is it actually shrinks the oil glands all over your body. So that is your scalp's gonna be dry, your face is gonna be dry, your hands are gonna be dry, your feet are gonna be dry, but it's shrinking all the oil glands over the surface of your entire body. So while it's doing that, you have to get labs every single month and check them every single month with your doctor to make sure that you're safe and need to go through all of the side effects that you're experiencing. This is the safest way to take Accutane and there is no other way. Other options a dermatologist might suggest include oral antibiotics or topical antibiotics, prescription retinoids, laser therapy, and oral contraception. Many times us dermatologists will inject them with a little bit of cortisone right into the center of the cyst or the nodule to get them to go away. Sometimes we do an IND, which is a physical drainage and extraction. Only a board certified dermatologist should be doing any type of drainage or extraction to your face. Don't do it yourself and don't have your friend, your buddy, or your beautician do it. That can unfortunately lead to scarring. In terms of prevention, my patient often asks me how to prevent acne breakouts to begin with. The thing about acne is it's often genetic. Mine certainly was, and unfortunately I passed it to my daughter. However, there are environmental factors that exacerbate acne that we have some control over. Keep your skin clean. Washing your face a minimum of twice a day can help to clear the oils in the dead skin that get trapped 
in your pores and block your pores and break you out to begin with. I recommend morning and evening and as soon as possible after you exercise, ideally before the sweat dries on your face. And then after you wash your face, I want you to reapply sunscreen. Even though you're washing your face before bed, you should be changing your pillowcase at least once a week. Hello, my college students. And every few days if you have excessively oily skin. Also, your washcloth needs to be changed every two days, regardless of your skin type. Make sure you're being gentle with your skin, especially if you're someone who shaves. Avoid any abrasive scrubs and choose either a gentle soap or a mild acne wash. Avoid anything that strips the skin. Astringents, toners, harsh exfoliants, self-chemical peels, those will dry your skin out and actually encourage it to make more oil, which will give you more acne. And even though it feels counterintuitive, make sure you're moisturizing. Again, a dry face encourages oil production, which is not what you want if you're trying to manage and treat your acne. Use a lightweight formulation at least once a day and use it on the areas where you feel a little tight even if you're not dry. You can also find a moisturizer that has anti-inflammatory ingredients that will help fight your acne like niacinamide, which is a great way to support acne treatment products. And of course, top it all off with a sunscreen with an SPF of 30, especially if you're actively treating your acne with acids or other chemicals because you don't want to leave dark spots behind. Another thing that exacerbates your acne is stress. So you can decrease your stress by exercising, sleeping better, so just keep those things in mind. The best overall advice for managing acne once again, do not pick at or otherwise manipulate your pimples. I hope you found this video helpful, and for more skincare advice, subscribe to Healthline YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.